Okay, Monday morning in the kingdom, and it's chilly willy. I got my new sweater on. Look at that, eh? Royal. All right. And it's chilly. Unreal. I don't believe it. Like, yesterday was hot, and it, you know, drained me out or whatever. And then the house was warm. And then you wake up this morning with the windows open. You're a frozen popsicle laying on the bed. All right. Okay, this morning, it's plus 11 Celsius. But it feels chilly. It feels like, like minus 4. But feels like 10. So plus 11, but feels like plus 10. On the yo-yo scale, plus 52, but feels like plus 50. Oh. We don't have anything of that vintage. Oh, yes, we do. The cats. The IH cats are fifth. And a couple of them are in the 1950s. All right. But also, too, Amazon has my seventh book in the Winter Road series on for free. Never give up. Yeah, that's my motto. Just like painting this here. Everybody else would have went in the house and cried when the paintbrushes weren't working and the colors wrong and all that stuff, eh? That's supposed to be red, but I think it's pink or something. I don't know. Who cares? I'm colorblind. Okay, so Amazon has my book, Never Give Up. For free as an ebook. you guys got to start enjoying these things. I'm giving you away for free. Okay, now if there was beer, you guys would, hey, here's my mailing address, eh? Okay. It's free from June 5th, no, June 12th to the 16th. Yeah, June, not July, okay? So that's five days in Amazon, four days on Sesame Street, yeah. Okay, and then another thing, on the internet there, I never had the roller toy, okay? Never had it, but it is the roller the first edition, because there's no cab and there's no markings for a cab to clip in. The other ones that are showing or the people on YouTube are sending me links or whatever that shows the cab on it. Plus it has the sloped back end for the grill to go in. Okay, the uh, one with the cab. So this is before OSHA or the health and workplace standards where you could ride in an open cockpit or whatever so if the machine rolled over you kind of got squished just a minor detail okay but i never had the roller i always wanted the crane oh i got a cough here <coughs> all right everybody have a drink i always wanted the tonka crane you know with the clamshell that grabbed everything and everything but i never got that everybody seemed to have the dump truck and the loader okay that was the standard toys when you were growing up yeah but i'd never seen the roller so once again we're learning, right? We're learning, okay? This is an educational channel. That's maybe why it's not doing too good on the views because I'm acting normal and trying to teach people. Yes, but if I did stupid stuff, you know, I'd be uh, have a million views. Yes, that's society today. Oh, there's a slight breeze. Okay, let's turn this way. So the paint turned out really good. Look at the 39 back there. Yes, and then the 67 Chevys right there. And then we have the other black fleet here. Yes, we should get the little maple leaf out and go for a zoom zoom. It sounds so good with those straight pipes. Oh, the flags are moving. Oh, did you see I bumped my head real quick? Let's scroll this way. All right. The 38 GMC that I rode around in 1977 to the International Peace Gardens. That's when it was a big to-do. Okay, look at the flags go. Where are they? Okay, there they are. Look at that. I still can't get over that Alaskan flag. I wonder if I moved there, it'd be just as fun. You know, free and having fun and my views will go up. Oh, well, just a dream. Okay, all right. So we're not sure what we're doing today. If it's being this chilly, it's cold. We're not sure what the staff's coming over, if we're going to do anything today, because it's still too cold to haul water. And it uh, might be too windy to film because we want to take the Screaming Ford out to haul water. But we need no wind because we got to get the music recorded properly. Yes, properly. Oh, God. I got the burps again. It's peanut butter. I'm going to have to switch to something healthy. Yes, at my age, you eat stuff and it affects you big time. Like, we don't go to that tacos or anything like that. We have to have everything plain. Yes, or I'll be paying for it for two days. But... Some people will say it's the alcohol. Well, I've never gotten sick on alcohol. I've always felt better. Yes. All right. 
Okay, the boss is coming. Let's get to work. Okay, this morning on Wilderness Alaska, we lucked out walking the dogs. Okay, in two days, I have filled the pails and the staff will have to empty them. So that tells you we're in a bad location for garbage and debris. And we keep walking over and walking past and we're finding more. So today's lucky day was a stubby beer bottle, which is Canadian only. I'm not sure. I think so. But this is the beers that I drank when I was underage. And then when I became legal age, we got the long neck ones, right? So there's a lot of country western songs featuring the log neck beers. I think uh, Big and Rich have that ride a horse, save a cowboy. They talk about it extensively. Plus double shots of crown. All right, let's flip this over. Okay, look at that. It says gold. Yes, there's gold on the plate. But look at how it's chipped on the side here. Like that's kind of strange that it was chipped away that way, okay? But there's probably more gold in this plate here from England, all right, than what these new guys want to go gold mining. I just shake my head. So the true test of this plate, stick it in the microwave and watch the show. All right, time to get to work. The fun is over for, for now. It's time to go to work. Okay, a little late in the day to start this project, but we're going to have to go ahead. All right, just like you see on Facebook and all the media or social media sites, they show a backhoe with a set of wheels on it, and then they use the bucket, well, spin it around, use the bucket to lift it up, you know, on the big mines. So I want to whip up a little axle to go in the blade here, okay? And then we can spin it around and lift it up on the back of a uh, vehicle. Yeah, we're not sure which vehicle yet. That way I don't need a trailer or if the staff has to go somewhere, we don't have to take a trailer. We can just use the mini because we got a little bit of off-roading cleanup to do. Okay, so we got the wheels and everything here. And I mark on them. They were for a skidoo trailer for the cops here, okay? Oh, I'm out in the wind. So these are good tires. They're nice and wide. We just got to make an axle. Okay, I use these tires on an axle here for the 45 Chevy 3 ton. But it's too narrow sort of thing. Plus the bolt pattern was wrong, okay? So I drilled it out. So that's just a minor detail. So we have to find the correct hubs, okay? So I used this axle to move the 45 3 ton around when there was no axles under it because we had it all apart for close to 40 years maybe. <laughs> yeah, so this is what we did. So we got this here. So let's see if we can correct some of the mistakes here and make a good project. We have a slight breeze. Look at the flags go. All except for the flag of exercise. Okay, 10 minutes in the parts trailer and we have everything because it's all marked out. So there was a light plant or whatever, those light generating plants or whatever in 2020, it had a bent axle. So it was cheaper to buy a complete axle than it was to fit. So look at that. That's the right bolt pattern. Okay, I'm not sure why they don't have a bolt pattern that's all standard. You have all different sizes. So I was smart enough to write on here. This is for the light plant. It's bent and it's a crack in the grease hole. But that's no problem. This axle will be too narrow for the project we're doing here. So we're going to cut it. And then when I cut it, I can weld it and fix it better. Because I'm going to put the axle on something like a channel iron or something for the blade to fit nicely in. So being organized, 10 minutes, we have everything all laid out here. I remember about 15 years ago, an American broke down with his boat trailer. And we had to hunt and scrounge for like an hour to find the little pieces to fit the wheel bearing back together. Now everything's in stock, organized. 10 minutes in the storage trailer, we're good to go. All right, let's get to work now. Okay, I cut the axle stubs off the axle because we need to go wider. All right, this is one thing I kind of frown upon and I don't recommend it. This is a greasable axle. Okay, I took the grease nipple out so you can see it right there. And this is cracked right at the grease hole. I don't know if we can see it. Oh, a little too bright or whatever with the camera here. I'd be outside, but it's too windy. All right, so there's the crack, minor detail. So drilling a hole through this axle stub, it, to me is pointless. Like this was a light plant and being bounced behind a vehicle on the roads up here, they're so rough. This thing bounced, bent the axle and cracked it too. In the past with boats and stuff from the States, We'd cut the hub or the uh, tubing here, uh, bend the wheel so it's straight so the guy can get home, weld it, and then he can change out the axle. But this one here, being cracked here, we went to a full re axle replacement and then we ended up shipping the light plant out at a later date because the contractor left without it, you know, couldn't go anywhere. So what we'll do is 
deep grind that, weld it, and call it good because this will be only an axle for hauling the mini hoe around. All right, let's get to work. Okay, that did not take long to weld. I chased the crack with the uh, chop saw cutting wheel or whatever blade in the grinder here, and I followed it through. Once you, this is an easy one to chase because you have the grease nipple right here. Oh, I'll change my stick around. You have the grease nipple right here. And that's where the grease comes out. So when you start grinding down here and beveling it out, you can see the grease or the darkness, okay? I did an uphand weld. I clamped it in the vise here, all right? Where this thing is not for road worth or road worthy, it's to get around the yard. So it was an uphand weld. And as you can see, we have globular formation right here, all right? That's what I want, okay? So now when I take my flapper disc and grind, I have the original material, so I know how much I'm gonna have to buff off, okay? So it was a nice weld, it turned out really well. I left the original grease hole here, and I chased it out with the 330 second. I was poking the hot rod or the rod right into the hole to get it to burn down. So I'm very pleased with this. While it cools down now, I'll go to the parts shed and get a bearing so I can slide the bearing on and off here to see how much uh, buffing I have to do. So this turned out rather well for being sober. Okay, I got the flapper disc in the small grinder and I'm going after the globular transformation here. Okay, I don't know if we can see it if it's showing up on film, but I'm just buffing it just enough, okay? And then I have my test bearing here, okay? But you gotta remember that the back of the bearing here, that shoulder, goes up against here, okay? So we don't need this back part perfect, okay? Because the seal is running back in here, so we're okay. So a little bit of creative magic, and we're good to go. Okay, that's it. The, the buffing wheel did really well, or the flapper disc. All right, so the bearing slides right on, all right? And it's tight down here on the original factory, and it's kind of got a little space up top. Oops, over here over here, which is good. All right, I made sure this is smooth here because the seal's going on. So that didn't take long. It took longer to film all this, but also too, the flapper disc, and then a little bit of hand filing. Oh, where's my finger? Hand filing. You have your wire brush to clean your files, and then you finish up with some nice emery. I don't have the best tools in the world, but I got it done. So I would sit there, and hand file it and didn't take long. But the thing is, it's done and now we can put this together and build the axle for the mini hoe to be transported around. Okay, this is a channel iron from the door in the new shop that kind of bent, twisted, we saved it. Plus it's got the door jam thingy welded onto it. So it's perfect to make a axle frame for it. All right, so what we did was use your squares, all right? The only thing that we know is true is the face of this. So to figure out flatness or whatever, go this way to the square here, all right, to the channel iron, but you also use your two squares. I can't hold two at the same time. And you use your square on the channel iron up against the face here. So you know it's your square straight, all right? And this end here is very important because this is the bent hub. Okay, because we marked it here with a paint marker. So this is bent. So we went to make sure that this is flat to the angle iron or the channel iron, but also too, the channel iron has a slight twist to it. As you can see, it's tight here. Oops, tight here. And a little space over here, minor detail. But that's no problem for moving the mini hoe around. So we'll do some more booger welds on this and then pretty well done for the day. We won't be able to cross brace it and make it look fancy, but we can get it up off the workbench in case it does rain. Okay, it appears I built a hoverboard. You know, those things that you, no. What is those things, those scooters or something? I'm not sure. I don't I never own one of those. Okay, that works out good with the I-beam or the channel iron the way it is. It self flipped itself over and I was able to drive up and get the blade on there by myself. And to center it, I just reached over with the bucket. You can see the little skiddy marks there and tapped the axle over. So this will actually work out good. Okay, for this project to happen, I didn't cut that beam or that channel iron right there. 
that's the width it was. I wasn't going to waste time cutting it. We're using a bent up axle. We're using oddball tires that can't be used anywhere else. These are a split rim or two rims together. All right, to, to which they make it or whatever. So the rust gets between the two flanges. Okay, here I'll back up and explain here. All right, see if I got enough talent. I can't turn my back because of the wind. Okay, so this rim, there's fronts and backs or whatever. And there's a space in here, like there's two pieces put together. So the rim rusts and then it gets all out of wanky. So that's why the fellow had to buy all new tires and rims for his trailer because these were all warped or out of alignment because of the rust between the two pieces or two flanges, okay? So this will work out good. I'm very pleased. And look at all the pieces we've taken out of the parts shelf, the semi-trailer, uh, the steel trailer. Now we have one item that we can roll around. All right, let's go find a test vehicle to see if this will work. Okay, of course it gets windy when I get the test vehicle out. I think this will work out, okay? I want the boom and everything to be in its natural state or whatever. Like I want the bucket tilted back there. So there's, uh, how you say, not having to lever down or whatever. And we got everything tucked up nice. For the clearance here, we can change the boom in or out, okay? And with the... Blade putting hardly any weight on the little dolly cart, okay, or the hoverboard or whatever you want to call it. That works out good because the cylinder's not extended. So if I need more height, I can just raise up the back. But I don't want height because I won't be going very fast. Also, too, here is I'll make a pivot pin for in the box here, like a plate that spins around like uh, so there's not binding. And I think that'll work out good. So this is turning out pretty good. We're using up material that we have. And this will work out good for moving the middle mini hole around. I think that axle turned out good. We'll have to put it back in the shop to do a more, little more welding on it. And I think we're good to go. Okay, we're done for the day. We're not sure what the weather's doing. It's chilly. Like I'm out here in a t-shirt and it's kind of chilly willy. Oh yeah. So we're not sure if it's going to rain or anything like that. But those look like rain clouds coming. All right, let's scroll this way. We'll take the cool weather any day over that hot heat. All right, look at the flags. The U.S. flag has one wrap. The flag exercise, well, natural state of being tangled. And of course, the Alaskan flag is flying free. All right, let's go walk the dogs, drink some beer, make a video. Talk to you later.